This video is going to go over how we create the IS curve from the savings and investment diagram. So on the left hand side, this is where we're going to have our savings and investment diagram. And on the right hand side, this is going to be our IS curve. The IS curve is representing that goods market, that investment and savings, which is why we're creating it with the savings and investment diagram here on the left. Now recall the savings and investment diagram are measuring the total amount of savings and investment related to the real interest rate. The IS curve over here wants to know how the real interest rate and output are related. So the IS curve by definition is telling us all of the real interest rate points that put the goods market in equilibrium for whatever level of output there is. So think about it. What it's telling us is it's telling us for any level of output, what real interest rate will put the goods market in equilibrium. That's why we use the goods market, the savings and investment diagram, to try and show that. Let's start by investment, which is not dependent on overall output. We know that's downward sloping. And let's go ahead and say that we have an initial level of savings. Here's a level of savings. And this is going to be associated with a level of income, say, Y sub A. And let's just say that it's Y sub A. We're just going to randomly pick a point right there. So what does this mean? Well, this means that if the income is this level, whatever this level is, if it is, this is going to be the savings function that results from that. Meaning that we are going to get an equilibrium point of R right here. Let's call this R sub A. Here's a level of savings and investment. And what that tells us is now we can see a relationship between the real interest rate and output. So this single point, right, this is showing the real interest rate that puts the goods market in equilibrium at Y sub A, right? That's what that single point is showing. That single point is showing the real interest rate, which is RA, that puts the goods market, the goods markets over here, in equilibrium. Well, what happens if we see a higher level of income? Let's say Y sub B. Well, if I have more income, I know I'm going to save more, right? We have this marginal propensity to save, meaning that we save more when we have more income. So more savings is a shift to the right. So this would be our savings function if we had Y sub B. Now, what does that mean? Well, this would be a different point. Let's just call it point B. We have R sub B and a new level of savings and investment. But what exactly is this telling us? This is telling us a new single point right here. It's representing, this is representing another point, right? It's showing the real interest rate that puts the goods market in equilibrium, but now at Y sub B. And just to make sure we know exactly how things look, let's go ahead and say with this green marker, Y sub C. And that's a lower one, so that's going to be a leftward shift of that savings function. So this is with Y sub C, which is going to get us a point C which is a higher interest rate. So if we have this lower level of income, we would need a higher level of the real interest rate to put the goods market in equilibrium. So what does this tell us, right? So this is point C. This tells us that we get a downward sloping IS curve, right? Let's go through all three of those. This is going to be our downward sloping IS curve. So the IS curve is created by looking at the relationship between output and the real interest rate. Shifts in this IS curve are going to depend on savings and investment, and we're going to get to that later in this lesson, but this was just about creating the IS curve and how it's related back to the goods market.